Uh, everything is good. Thank you to the airline whose jets are the color of the New York Giants for getting me in on time. Nice. And now it is pouring rain here leaving Newark Airport. I was just listening. I got one for you guys. Yeah. In the in the tradition of Joanna Cespedes, mm. we could call the Washington team the wild boars. <laughs> and the, the marketing thing would be boring football. <laughs> Get bored with the Washington wild boars. Man. How about that one? There you Provoke go. that man. Ricky yeah. Ricardo's got all the ideas. The boring right. Washington boring. Could Listen. have been better said from a the one of the voices of the Philadelphia Eagles. Could have been better <laughs> said. <laughs> you know it, both. Yeah, Ricky, we never talked about that big piece of the athletic. They've got a couple doozies this week. That deep dive on the Philadelphia Eagles was not exactly a flattering of that organization, but well, that'll be for another time. You know, Ricky, we were talking about how this could be kind of sneaky big series here for the Yankees early on. You got bad blood with the Rays. You've been losing to the Rays. They they have your number. Yankees are looking for something to get going and kind of get that spark going in this this season. How big could this um, set with the with the Rays be this weekend? I tell you what, it's a bigger series than than people want to make it out to be. It's early, but I think. You can't win a pennant. You can't win a division in April, but sure can lose one. You don't want to lose the battle of the psyche. Watch them get taken apart by the Texas Rangers of all teams at home during the week. You know, that's the team we get on local TV. You know, at home in Florida. So it, 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 it's it's not like this Tampa Bay Ray team is uh, is invincible, but somehow they've got this. You know, this thing over the Yankees. Now, having watched those games in uh, in Dunedin this week, the Yankees simply just have to start hitting the baseball. Clutch hitting, I think they'll snap out of it this weekend. I think Michael Walker will be sacrificial lamb number one. But there are some tensions. And, you know, Maggie, you brought this up the last time about there being some high tension. And, and I said, you know, Let's let's just call it even and start from scratch. But with Montgomery hitting a couple of guys last week, four hit batsmen all together last weekend in Tampa, and Kevin Cash opening his his trap again, you know, and making some comments about uh, how the Chapman situation was handled last year, that it should have been more severe, the punishment. I do think there's a little bit of an edge to this series. So tonight, I think, uh, you know, you might have some spirited baseball, a team that's I'm not going to say desperate, but a team that doesn't want to hear it about how bad they're playing in the Yankees and a team uh, like the Rays who just got manhandled a little bit by the Texas Rangers. So you've got a couple of Bulls, really some Rams, that are about to, that are about to uh, go to battle here this week, and I like it. You know, Ricky, Maggie and I were discussing a little bit earlier. Do you think the 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 injuries that this team has suffered in, in recent years, how big of a, a common narrative that it has been, do you think that is has played into their decision making and how they've handled this team early on? Uh, from a management point of view, I think I, I think there's a possibility. Uh, if the Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton have been the two guys that everyone points to when staying on the field. So far, so good with Aaron Judge after the little load management thing the first week. He looks as flexible and as healthy right now, at least after that two-home run game on Wednesday. He looks good. But I do think that the organization, especially with the pitching, Kluber comes out of the game early. Again, the other day, 77 pitches, although he had, I believe it was 15 swings and misses. So there's some progress with Corey Kluber. Uh, But I do think they're taking it very easy with Kluber and Tyone. Uh, because I think they don't want to get bit again by as severe of the injury bug as it has been the last couple of years. So that, there's something to that, Moose. I think you might be right. We're talking with Ricky Ricardo, of course, Spanish radio voice of the Yankees, and he joins us every week. So what did you see out of Kluber that makes you think that he's trending in the right direction? Was it just the swings and misses? Gave up a couple homers, obviously, but that's pitching in 2021. What did you What did you see from him that made you encourage, Ricky? You know, I, I thought that his breaking pitches were much sharper. The home plate umpire, the umpiring, by the way, and I'm not one to really jump all over them. I, you know, a bunch of them are friends of mine. But the umpiring in that series, in both series, actually, on the road trip, in both Tampa and Dunedin, the home plate umpiring was 
awful, awful. And but Kluber was hitting some corners. I think if if he would have gotten a couple of more pitches in key situations and key counts from the home plate umpire pitches, I thought he deserved. I thought maybe he would have been able to stay in the game, maybe at least long enough to qualify for the win. Uh, we all know how it ended. But what I see from Kluber is he's starting to hit his spots a little bit more. It's going to take a minute for him to transform. We, we talked about this is not the Corey Kluber, you know, that won the two Cy Youngs with the Indians. That fastball, if you notice, doesn't go any higher than 91 miles an hour. And that game on uh, his last start on Wednesday afternoon, he hit 91 a couple of times, but the fastball was 89-90. So it's going to take him a minute, I think, to transform into a more cerebral type of pitcher. But I do see, anyway, a little progress. Uh, and some of those breaking pitches starting to hit its spots. And if he can start hitting spots, use the fastball strategically, because he's not going to blow you away anymore, I think eventually you'll have a new kind of Corey Kluber. But he's such a smart pitcher. He's such a competitor. I think he'll be all right. Jamison Tyone, I still think he's got his, his big toe in the water. It's a little bit different. You can tell that uh, you know every inning that goes by, him and the pitching coaches, they kind of evaluate everything that goes on with him after the two surgeries. So I, I think that maybe Kluber is a little bit ahead of Tyone as far as just establishing themselves as part of this rotation. But Kluber, the other day, I thought his stuff was much better than the first two starts. Um, Ricky, what's this bullpen going to, as, as Tyone Kluber and the rest of the starters behind Garrett Cole figure it out, and I know Nick Nelson tonight in an opener will be backed up by Mike King, what is this bullpen, though, going to look like with the amount of use that they've had early on in this season if that continues with these guys trying to find themselves? That's the risk you take, Moose. You, you do risk burning some of these guys out. So I, I would hope that as it's funny because you know, you're talking about the Yankees having an off day yesterday and another off day on Monday. So when I saw TBD on Wednesday, I would have figured four days rest on schedule for Montgomery tonight and keeping Cole on schedule four days rest on Saturday afternoon, but they decided to go the other way. Now, it may be a six starter at some point. Maybe you bring up a Davy Garcia. Uh, if the bench is limited, and we see the limitations of this bench, especially when you're hoping for a right-handed bat. Everything you've got the other day, uh, you know, you sat LeMahieu and Stanton, but that's, you know, that's a one-off. Uh, but you're right. They run the risk of burning these guys out if things continue this way. The only other thing might be to get to a, a six-starter. Now, after the Monday off day, then they'll go a couple of weeks. Uh, without an off day. So you might see, Moose, especially if there's some strain on the pen, Abreu, the youngster Abreu, looks very, very good, throws very, very hard, but he's young. You might see maybe a six starter involved in here to try to, you know, get some more innings out of the rotation and try to get that bullpen, you know, some sort of pace where they don't get to the all-star break and, you know, these guys are just, you know, huffing for air and they don't have their arms fall off by the time we get to September in a pennant race. So uh, maybe going the uh, the six-starter route when they have a stretch like this that's coming up for a couple of weeks without a day off, that might be the route. And then hopefully within the game you get some length from some of these guys. Yeah, well, that's what we're waiting to see, but we understand it's early. Ricky Ricardo is our guest. Ricky, what's what's Jay, Bru- Jay Bruce's future, immediate, uh, like short-term and long-term future with the Yankees? It's not looking very good. Uh, it, the at bats have the at bats have been bad. If you go back and take a look at some of Jay Bruce's at bats as a Cincinnati Red in his heyday, or even his, you know some of his at bats with the Mets, where he worked the count a little bit better than he has, he just looks overmatched sometimes uh, as of late, which is concerning. A veteran like that, and, and maybe he's got you know the pressure of knowing he's got to produce right off the bat. And, you know, you've got Mike Ford, who's another left-handed hitting first baseman right there at the alternate site, ready to go. Defensively, he made a couple plays. We know he's not Keith Hernandez or Don Mattingly with the glove. Uh, but I'd be, I'd be concerned if I were Bruce because I, I think maybe he's trying to do a little bit too much, trying to protect that position on the, uh, on the roster. But that might be uh, he himself putting a little bit too much pressure on himself 
and that might cost him in the long run. If it continues this way, I would not be shocked at all that maybe after this homestand, unless he starts producing, maybe when they go on the road to Cleveland for a four-game series on Thursday, that you might see Mike Ford up and you might see Jay Bruce being, uh, you know, being let go. Ricky, do you think uh, Clint Frazier should be this team's everyday left fielder regardless? Give him the opportunity. Um, you know, we broke camp as it. You've seen Brett Gardner. He hasn't played three of the last five. What about Frazier and his role with this team? Moose, at this point in early April, 12 games into the season, I would give him to Memorial Day to play his way out of being the everyday left fielder. Okay, it's been a long time coming. He's wanted the opportunity. The organization's been hoping that he would grab the bull by the horns. I would say let him go. Let him let him play every day up until around Memorial Day weekend, and let's reevaluate there. Gardner's going to be there. He's a veteran. If he plays every day, that's fine. If he if he comes off the bench, that's fine too. Gardner is a very uh, adjustable piece who's going to produce no matter how you use him. But for Frazier to finally get an answer on this guy, I think the sample size so far is a little bit too small. I'd give him to Memorial Day weekend. Play him every day. Hope he stays healthy. And once you get to that mile marker, that you know that first post, which is uh, in a baseball season, the Memorial Day weekend, when you start really making some evaluations, then at that point I could uh, take a stark look at what he's doing or not doing and make a decision moving forward. Ricky, how did the organization, um, how did they view Gio Urshela taking, uh, you know, playing for Glaber at short? Do you think they see him? He's obviously the backup, but you know, we talked a lot about Glaber's defense, and then he had jammed the ring finger, and so had an off day. And and, and Aaron Boone said he thinks his swings are looking a lot better. But how did the organization look at Urshela playing shortstop? And if the worst case scenario happened where Glaber continued to struggle, do you think they would make that move? I, I don't think they would make that move on a a, a, a semi quasi permanent base. I think he's just fine when needed. Uh, if you need to give Glaber a blow, now if Glaber were to have a more and thank God this injury isn't very serious. At least we don't think so. He got back right. in the lineup the next day. Uh, but you know, in, in case of fire, break glass with Urshela. You know, once, twice, give uh, Glaber a blow. But I wouldn't move. He is so good, Maggie. His third base defense helps out everyone around the around the diamond. He is so good at third that I wouldn't mess with it. Yeah. You've got gold glove quality infielders in LeMahieu at second who has won a gold glove at that position. I hear so many people make it so easy to say, well, just move LeMahieu over to first base. Why? He's a gold glove winning second baseman. You're weakening your defense at more than one position when you move guys around. Orshella in a pinch at short, he can play anywhere in the infield. He's that good. But he is so good at third base that I don't think he would be, you know, the, the, the alternative if Glaber were to ever get moved. I think at that point you would either dip into a, your minor league system, maybe Tyler Wade, maybe a Kyle Holder, if you're looking at, you know, in the system, or you look outside the system. Uh, but I think we're very, very far away. You notice Glaber's defense was much better on the road trip and he made a lot of plays when he doesn't have to think. A lot of plays where he ranges to his left, makes the throw off balance. It, it's almost as if when he doesn't have time to think about what he has to do, mm. he makes the play. When it's ex- instinctive, he's fabulous. It's when he gets the ball and taps the glove and thinks about it. That's when you see Glaber have the most issue as far as his defense is concerned. When it's a bang-bang play and it really depends on his athleticism, he does just fine. I think it might be between the ears more than anything else with Glaber at short. Had a nice you know, spinorama, Ricky, too, yeah. a couple of games ago. Yeah, yep. yeah, it's very good. Ricky, uh, last one would be it would be early impressions of this team. We've talked about the concerns, whether it be the lineup, the defense. We've talked about the starting rotation. Has there been anything where you look at it and say that this is, you know, this is going to fail, that this team is going to underwhelm? Are you, you know, are you alarmed at anything that that is that you deem not fixable that could be this team's? Dem- I'm not talking about October playoffs. I'm talking about more regular season expectations. Not fixable, no. I, I think some of the things that concern me here at the beginning are just the ups and downs, the roller coaster ride, the grind of a baseball season. The team is going to hit. 
they are too good not to hit the baseball. So eventually they're going to come out of their funk. You know, we all talk about the fact that pitchers are more advanced coming out of spring training than hitters are. We're only 12 games, whatever it may be. We're, you know, it's just a day after Jackie Robinson and, and the original tax day this year. It's next month. But we're very, very early in the season. This team is going to hit the cover off the baseball. My only concern, and I love Chapman. I mean, the, the bullpen and Chapman are, are all just throwing 101 miles an hour in early April. We haven't seen that in a long time. I think the bullpen is fine. Uh, you've got a couple of good arms, young arms, at the alternate site that can be used as either a starter, guys like Abreu, there's a couple of more down there. Uh, so the things that concern me, which are Glaber's defense, there's something you're going to have to deal with. They, they roll the dice there. It's something you're going to have to monitor throughout the season. But like I mentioned, it might be between the ears. And the hitting, I think it's going to come around eventually. Could be this weekend. Could be this homestand. So not fixable, no. Some of the things that concern me up to now are some of the things that we saw go wrong last year. Now, if, if you know you get to, uh, like I mentioned, a Memorial Day or, or one of the uh, you know uh, posts that you look at during the season and some of these things haven't changed, then you start to think about how, you, how to tweak the roster and it falls back into the lap of Brian Cashman. But for now, the little thing that concerned me, and I think the biggest thing is the lack of clutch hitting, I think that'll come around. All right, so Ricky, is he wants the Washington football team to be the wild boars. Correct. Well, it, yeah, you don't I mean, think they were the, 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 they were the, the hogs. You know, the you archers. Know, them. <laughs> they, what, what do you call them, Maggie? What do you want? Uh, the archers? The, that's, that's one of the lists. Also, the armada or oh. the brigade. Oh, my God. Wasn't the there demon a cats. What a, <laughs> Wasn't there an armada in one of the USFL or the WFL? One of those leagues, didn't they have like a, a I team think that you're sounded right. like AAF? Yeah. Something like that. Maybe the <laughs> AAF, yeah. I think that name's been you. That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Some team that how Christian Hackenberg the, probably started for that wasn't the how, Jets. How oh, about wait. the Admirals? The Washington Admirals. Ugh. Didn't even make the list. Didn't Not even the make the list. <laughs> Moose, you're the you're the Washington football team fan. I'm going to leave this in your lap. Yeah, don't go the Renegades. The Orlando Renegades were in the USFL. Oh, don't go right. Renegades. Um, yeah, was, someone uh, probably but, coached by a Stoops I like, brother. I like the Red Wolves. I like the Red Tails, or just keep it Washington football team. That's where I would go. I don't know, like these other uh, nicknames. These other ones stink. They're terrible. How about the Washington Rubies? Who the hell's calling them the Rubies? The Ru- just call them the rubes so <laughs> you feel like watching one of those games. Thank you, Maggie. Yeah, oh, it's you're too welcome. easy. Too easy. <laughs> Rick, wild boars, you. baby. Wild boars. <laughs> Get bored with the wild boars. That's a, it's about time we did something to really honor you and Cespedes around here. Uh, Ricky, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Have a good series. Talk soon. Okay. You got it. 